Hello, good morning, Praise Chapel family. How's everybody doing? Good? Yes, Guys, come on, it's a Super Bowl, but most importantly, we're here for Jesus. Can I get a better clap? <laughs> Online family, we're happy to have you guys here with us. Please comment, interact with us. We want to hear from you guys because you are just as important to us as the people who are here. I just want to encourage you guys. I was reading uh, the verse of the day today, and I, it really spoke to me because a lot of times we try to do things on our own. You know, today's the Super Bowl. Those teams didn't make the Super Bowl on their own. They had a coach. They had somebody to guide them. They had somebody to train with them. They had somebody to push them and be there, to be their very best. And how many know God's like our coach. He's our life coach, guys. And a lot of times we try to handle our problems or the things that we face in this world by ourselves, with our own strength, with our own ability. And how many know that we fall on our face every time we try to do it by ourselves? So I was reading this verse. It's in Corinthians. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But the Lord said, my grace is all you need. Only when you are weak can everything be done completely by my power. So I will gladly boast about my weaknesses. Then Christ's power can stay in me. And it spoke to me because we don't go to God as much as we should. We don't ask for his help as much as we should. We wait until we broken ourselves more and then we want to we come to God with our broken pieces and ask him, please put me back together. And that's okay. Because how many times, like, we have to, we have to fall and hit our heads. Babies, they have to fall and hit their heads before they learn not to do something. But this, this scripture shows by God's grace, he'll be there. By God's grace, by God's power, he will put us back together. And I just want to encourage you guys with the Super Bowl, it's, it's no different. We are the team of God. We are, whatever team is your favorite team, whether it be basketball, football, whatever it be, we are the God's team. Yes. We are, and he is our life coach, and we need to pray for each other. We need to help each other. We need to listen to God and be aligned with God. And with that said, I just want to encourage you guys to pray for each other, not just in this church, not just online, but those who are also disciples of Christ, those who are also in the fight with us because we all need it. Pray for our pastors. Pray for Praise Chapel pastors. Pray for our coaches because there are, there are other coaches like our pastors who are here to help us as well and they need prayer because the enemy attacks them. So let's, let's worship God. Let's give him everything we have. Let's lay it at his feet and let's just pray, God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace, your mercy, Lord God. You love us when we are unlovable. You take care of us even when we're too stubborn to let you. You continue, Lord God, to open doors and close them. Lord God, you know what's best for us. You know what we need. You are there no matter what. And today I pray, Lord God, that our needs, our problems, Lord God, we will lay them at your feet and we will keep them there. That we won't pick them back up, Lord God, that we will trust in you. That we will believe that you are God Almighty. You are the God of healing. You are the God who breaks strongholds. You are the living God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that we will continue, Lord God, to seek you, Lord God. Today, Lord God, we just, we worship you. Nothing in our minds, nothing nothing holding us back. We're going to worship you and give you our all and our praise because you are so deserving and so much more, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that you will bless this service, that you will fill your church with the Holy Spirit, and that you will continue, Lord God, to guide us and give us strength. In Jesus' name, amen. I stand before you, Lord, and give
hands everything's so different lord i know i'm not the same my life you change i want to be with you so now lord and now that you're near everything is different everything's so different lord I know I'm not the same. My life you changed. I wanna be with you. I wanna be with you. to me from where the thunder hides I can't outrun this heart I'm tethered to when every step I collide with you like a tidal wave crashing over me Rushing in to meet me here Your love is fierce Like a hurricane That I can't escape Tearing through the atmosphere Your love is fierce Your love is fierce You cannot fail The only thing I found Is through it all Is through it all You never let me down You don't hold back Relentless in pursuit At every turn At every turn I come face to face with you Like a tidal wave crashing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape. Tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce. Like a tidal wave Crashing over me Rushing in to meet me here It's your love is fierce Like a hurricane That I can't escape And tearing through the atmosphere Your love is fierce Chase me down, seek me out. How can I be lost when you've called me found? You chase me down, seek me out. But how can I be lost when you have called me found? Chase me down, seek me out. How can I be lost when you have called me found? Chase me down, 
seek me out but how can I be lost when you have called me found you chase me down you seek me out but how can I be lost when you have called me found you chase me down Take me out But how can I be lost When you have called me found You chase You chase me down You seek me out But how can I be lost When you have called me found Like a tidal wave Crashing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape. It's tearing through the atmosphere. It's your love is fierce, like a tidal wave. And crashing over me, rushing in to meet me here. Your strong love is fierce, like a hurricane that I can't escape. And tearing through the atmosphere, your love is fierce. You chase me down. You seek me out, but how can I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down, you seek me out, but how can I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down. You seek me out, but how can I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down, you seek me out. How can I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down. Seek me out. How can I be lost when you have called me found? You chase me down. You seek me out. But how can I be lost when you have called me found? Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, 
There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. So you were worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. It's worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, oh Jesus. Jesus, name above every other name. Just the only one. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. You are holy and holy. There is no one like you. And there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And holy, and there is no one like you, and there is none. Beside you, open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Shaken, holy, 
There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those I will build And I will build my life Upon your love It is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those, sing it out, holy And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Lord, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, mighty King. Lord, we praise your name. God, we worship you and adore you, Lord. Come on, people of God, let's worship his holy name. Let's give him praise. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I almost forgot my mic. Come on, people of God, let's praise his name. He is worthy of praise and honor. God, you are worthy, my Lord and my Savior. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. That love that's fierce, Lord, that breaks through anything, Lord God. Unstoppable love. Thank you, my God. Lord, we want to build our life on you. Lord God, yes, we want you to be everything, our everything, Lord God. Praise your name. Praise your holy name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, just to praise his name, to bring glory to his name. We're going to go before the Lord in a time of prayer. And, um, and I do want to just mention this. After we're done with prayer, um, I, I would like to just ask respectfully. Yeah, you want to work on that a little? Maybe I'm too close to the monitor there. Uh, I just want to ask that, you know, when we say hi, just turn around and wave, you know. Uh, we're, we're still doing that. Let's, let's make sure that we have that, that everybody feels comfortable. Because when people feel comfortable, then they come to church, and then they experience what you can't. It's hard to experience at home, really hard. Okay, so thank you for that. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We have a couple of needs that we need to be praying for. Amen. Uh, I want to ask you to pray for Sister Brenda. Uh, she's sick at home, and Brenda doesn't like missing. 
So she only misses when it's too much to, to deal with. So let's pray for her for healing. And I just know that the enemy don't like her. <laughs> I, I like to say it that way. The enemy don't like her because, you know, the enemy doesn't like anyone who stands for the Lord. Right? And he's always going to try to come against people. So, um, amen. We'll pray for her. I want to pray for my sister Trini this morning. Uh, we're lifting up my sister, um, and we've just been praying for her. Um, I, I don't have the the latest status, but what I understand is she needs she needs God to just really touch her body, give her strength in every way. Is that right? In every way, physically and 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 mentally, and in every way, just a real touch of God. And and I just need to ask this question: How many of you know, not think, not assume, but you know that our God is the healer? Amen. Amen. He is the healer, folks, and His purpose, His will is perfect for us, perfectly fitting. And so we're going to be, we're going to be praying for our sister Trini, our sister Brenda, and we're going to pray for comfort for the families who've been through so much. And that prayer list will go a long way. Just, there's too much, too many people on that list to name off, but I just want to encourage everyone, pray for those who are in need of comfort and healing. There are some, uh, the, 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 the latest family that has really is in deep need of our prayers is the Ventura family. So continue to pray for the Ventura family. But you know what? There are so many, and it's, it's just heartbreaking, so heartbreaking uh, to, to see all the struggles, the Dandridge family, you know, Pastor Victor Dandridge uh, losing his wife, um, you know, to such a, tr such a horrible crime. So many. So anyway, like I said, there's just so many. We're going to um, lift them up. And, and, and those of you who God puts on your heart, on your mind, people to pray, just realize that he's doing that so that they get covered. And if everyone will listen to the voice of God and listen to the leading of the Spirit as we pray, we're still in unity. But as a church, we're praying together that God would move mightily, powerfully. And it is a prayer uh, in unity. Uh, those of you who are at home, we're praying for you. Li we're lifting you up. You, you can share your prayer request uh, you know, on our, our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Just know that we will be praying for you as you lift them up. So uh, I'm going to ask Brother Mo. He's going to come in and... I, maybe I should call Brother Moses for those who don't know. Uh, I, I call him Mo. So I'm going to ask Brother Mo to come and Moses, come and just, just pray and lead us in prayer. And, and I want to encourage you guys, really just lift up those who the Lord puts in your heart today. Amen? Amen. And don't forget to pray for our city. Amen. Our city. Montebello, Hacienda Heights, East LA, and more cities to come. Go ahead, my brother. Amen. Before we 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 come to get our pray, I I want to um you know um um you know share by 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 experience what what what's been happening to me ever since you know the you know the Daniel fast you know but I I've noticed that that since since I've been seeking and praying you know um lately I've been I've been doing my lunch breaks I've been walking at work and as 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 I walk you know I put my headphones on and I. I pray, and, and, I've, and I've noticed lately that you know when 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 I, z uh, I, I zero out the uh, the world and just focus on Jesus, I've noticed that Jesus is walking next to me. Literally, I I I, I felt His presence next to me, and I felt such a peace as I as I as I prayed and I, and I seeked Him that I was able to just calm down and just pray like 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 He was next to me, and and I felt like I was able to just talk to Him, and I felt like He, he was hearing me. So, so based on my experience, I know it's such peace as, as I zero out the world and just focus on Him and not just rush the prayer. Because too, too many of us just rush the prayer, want to be in a hurry to finish the prayer. But, but I, I learned that, that if we just stay calm, just focus on Jesus and just, just talk to Him, He'll hear us. Whether we're walking, whether we're in our prayer room, or just sitting down praying to Him, you know, just, just know that he is next to us. He is, he is hearing us out. He, he does, he does listen. We, we, we need to just talk to him and, and just trust that he is there because he is there for, for not, not just me, just, not just for the pastor, but he, he's, he's hearing us. He's hearing everybody. 
he, he, he wants to hear from from all of us whether we're you know whether whether we past whatever whatever we, we whatever we have, may have done or we or we we, we, we fell short or we or we backslid you know it, Jesus wants to hear from us he, he, he wants to you know um, you know uh, us to you know seek him and 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 and, and um, trust him so so right now before get, we, we, before we you know um, uh, get into a prayer you know let, let's just you know f- focus on Jesus and, and just and just you know uh, um focus on him and just talk to him and not, you know, not just not, not just rush through our our prayer so um our Lord Jesus Christ our Father in heaven I thank you for this day my Lord I thank you for bringing us together as one family and I thank you for being our king and our savior I thank you for your forgiveness and, and th- th- this morning, my Lord, I, w- I, w- I, w- I want to pray for, for the for, for, for the Hacienda Heights Church, my Lord. I, w- I want you to please uh, put your hand upon that church, my Lord. Please bless that couple. Please bless, bless the ministry. Bless, bless, bless their finances. And also we're praying for, for Praise Chapel East LA, my Lord. Please put your hand upon uh, um, Pastor John, Sister Lucy, my Lord. Please bless that couple, my Lord. Please bless their health. Bless their ministry. Bless their walk with you. Bless their congregation. And please put your hand upon Pastor Tony. And, and Sister Brenda, my Lord, please bless this couple, my Lord. Bless their ministry, bless their strength, bless their health, my Lord. Bless their finances. And please bless, bless Prince Chapel of Montebello. And please bless, bless the congregation, my Lord. Please keep us strong, keep us focused, my Lord. As, as, and, and as the world crum- crumbles around us, my Lord, please, please don't let us fall to the left or to the right. But, but keep us walking forward towards you, towards your kingdom, towards your glory, my Lord, towards your purpose. Please keep on strong, keep us focused. And please bless this, 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 this city, my Lord, of Montebello, my Lord. Please bless this city. And please allow us to be able to, to see us the way, you know, we are seeking you, my Lord Jesus Christ. And please, I want to lift up my sister, uh, Trini, my Lord, that she's sick, my Lord, that's sick in body. Please give her complete upon her body, my Lord. Please do not allow the enemy to deceive her in any way, my Lord. Keep her, keep her strong, keep her focused. We're asking for a complete upon her body. We're asking for a complete upon Sister Brenda, my Lord. Whatever she's sick of, my Lord, please, please take away that sickness, my Lord. Please give her a complete upon her body. Please embrace her with your love and your strength. Also, I want to pray for today's message, my Lord. To please allow today's message to, to, um, to please magnify the pastor's voice with the message you have given him to share with us. Please allow the message to start touch our hearts, touch our minds. Please do not allow the enemy to rob us, rob us of this message. But, but keep this, this one message focused, my Lord, because this one message it, it, it will speak to every single one of us according to our situation, according to our needs, according to, to, our, to our strength. And I also want to pray for, for the the you know the the, the the people in office people in 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 in, 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 in office mother they, they they you please speak to them my lord and please send me people to minister to them to to show them your way to show them your ways your 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 your, your path my lord jesus christ and i thank you for bringing us together as one family and i ask you to please bless the the, the people that, that that haven't been able to come to church give them the strength the courage and the, and, the, and, the, and the wisdom to be able to come to church and trust in you my lord that that, that it's safe to come out to, to come out and come out to, to your house and uh, uh, worship my lord and i also want to pray my lord that that nobody leaves here the same way they came in but allow everybody to leave here blessed encouraged and strained and healed my lord by by by, by your presence by the touch of you by your word by your presence my lord and in your precious name, Jesus Christ, and your beautiful Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you, my camera, Jesus. With that, everybody, uh, turn around and we'll wave at each other. Yes. Amen. All right. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's make sure that we just kind of say hi to everybody there. And, um, yeah, that's just a beautiful, beautiful way to say hello. And, you know, families sitting together with families, you guys live with each other. So, you know, it's not like you got to worry about anything there thank you Jesus (laughs) all right thank you my sister okay well, it's good to be. It's good to be here this morning. I, I just got to ask a question real quick. How many of you are thankful to be in the house of God this morning? Anybody thankful for that? I am always, always thankful, and I hope you are as well. We welcome everyone this morning. We also welcome 
Uh, we welcome those of you who are attending online with us. We're so grateful. Um, one of the things that I believe, I've always believed and I always will believe, is that we, uh, our family is extended wide across, uh, uh, not just across town, but across the cities and even states. And uh, so I'm just thankful we welcome you with us this morning. It is Super Bowl Sunday, so some of you are wondering, why is Pastor wearing an oversized jersey? Somebody said to me, somebody said to me, and I thought it was funny. Somebody said, hey, you forgot to put the shoulder pads on. <laughs> Someone else said the wrong colors. Um, yeah, that works. I, I will say this, and, and Lori, maybe you can work a little bit more on this mic. Just, I, I feel like it's still a little bit, I, like if I talk a little louder, we're going to whistle in somebody's ear. So uh, thank you, Lori. Um, yeah, the other thing is, um, uh, Brother Mo talked about what the Daniel Fast was doing, uh, how God used the Daniel Fast in his life. Well, the Daniel Fast for me, I, I, I almost disappeared. <laughs> I, I shrunk a little. I looked like uh, about a two quarters, three quarters of my, myself or something. So feels good, though. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thankful you're here with us. Uh, we're going to have a great time this morning. And, and I just want to remind everybody that that even in the times of struggle, difficulties, the Word of God is very clear. We need to always walk in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, when things are going tough and, and people are going through stuff, don't, don't feel like you have to be somber or it shows disrespect towards people who are hurting. Absolutely not. Instead, shine the light, show, show the joy of the Lord, let the, let the joy uh, infect other people, you know what I mean? Uh, because the reality is, we need the strength of God. We don't need to succumb to the, the lies of the enemy, that, the, the, that feeling of it's hope, there's hopelessness. And no, our God is on the throne, folks. Amen, he is on the throne, and so... Uh, so real quick, I uh, want to give you a few things. As you guys know, um, offering time is at the end of service, so we're going to just have a quick announcement. We're going to, uh, I guess, the, I guess set apart. You took off. They didn't even wait. Huh? They're like, Toom, they're gone. That's cool. That's all right. They're, that shows that they want to go hang out. That's a good thing. We have our set apart youth and our children's ministry, Praise Kids. We are uh, just, you know, we're just doing things in steps in ways that we can minister and serve God's people. I tell you, get ready, folks, because I, I just believe what God showed me in, the, in this Daniel fast is what's coming is families, families, young people, uh, young couples, uh, uh, you know, kids, uncles and aunts and grandparents. Families are coming. Just, it, it's just that time where, where people are really, truly understanding that the only real hope for the, the feeling of hopelessness is the Lord God. And you find the Lord Jesus in his house. You find him in his people. And so get ready. Just get ready for that. So a couple quick announcements, things that you want to just be aware of is you can keep an eye on our Facebook you can keep an eye on our YouTube, but Facebook page tells you what's going on. In a couple of weeks, uh, we're working on something that will be getting started, and it's going to be a great time. On Sunday mornings, we're going to be doing a, a, a I believe, a five-week series uh, on Sunday morning, and it's going to, a couple of weeks from now, we'll be getting started. It's going to be a great time. We just had to get, we got to get past Super Bowl, and, um, and, and then I believe Valentine's is, isn't it next week? Man, man, oh man, just flying. Time is flying already. So we want to get past the, and I'm not trying to make those things light or not important, uh, but of course, once we get past those beautiful events, well, Valentine's could be a great event, obviously, uh, of spending time with your, your loved ones and, and all of that. And Super Bowl is just a fun time, right? Even if your team isn't in the Super Bowl, Right? Okay, somebody asked me why am I wearing the wrong colors. It's because I'm proud of my team. They overachieved this year. <laughs> That's how I see it. They overachieved. That's what happened. They did great. Hopefully, they'll do good again this year, next year. Yep, so congratulations to all those teams that, you know, did good. The ones that didn't, you know, those of you who are at home, 
Um, there's a lot of dumb inside jokes that happen, so I apologize to you in advance on Super Bowl Sunday. All right, so, here, so just keep your eye on the Facebook page announcements. Um, got some good things coming up, but a five-week series coming up. On Sunday mornings, we want to get you prepared for it. It is called the Go Tell series. Go Tell. So that doesn't mean go gossip. That doesn't mean go backbite. Don't slander, you know, go do, the, no, but it is a, the Go Tell series. So we're going to have a good time with that, and we'll let you know more about that uh, later on. So with that, those are the announcements uh, for right now. We're going to get into the Word of God right now. And this is one of the things I love about our new format is we get into that word quick. We get into it. We have time to share the Word. We have time to reflect. And, and so this morning, we're going to be uh, sharing uh, a Super Bowl message. I, I'll let you guys know in advance that this is, this is just not my strength. I've never been good at like theme type uh, messages, if you will. You know, I've <laughs> I just never been good at that. It's not my, that's not my thing, but you know, I, I just love sharing God's word. And, and, uh, but I do find that this year's, there's a message that's timely that God has placed in my heart. And so we're going to go with that. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Let's ask the Lord to move and have his way. Because how many know if, if God shows up, it doesn't, know, it doesn't matter how bad my message is, right? If God shows up, we're good. Amen. Right? Amen. <clears throat> Father, in Jesus' precious name, we are grateful for your love. We are grateful for your mercy. We are grateful for your grace. Your great grace. We are grateful for the presence of God and the house of God and the family of God. And we're grateful, Lord God, that you, almighty God, are on the throne and no one's higher, no one's greater, no one's like our God. And Lord, we thank you that you've allowed us and called us to be your children. What an honor, what a privilege. Father, we pray that today, Lord, that today, you would have your way, and Lord, that your spirit would continue to sweep across the land with the powerful sword of the word and bless and convict and change lives so that your people would shine the light brightly, and that we would not be afraid or ashamed, that we would be ready to stand against anything the enemy will come up with, that we would take the stand needed, Lord God, to show the world that you are the only answer, my Father. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. All right, so let's get into God's word. Uh, this morning's Super Bowl message is entitled, How Much Do You Want Your Team to Win? <laughs> it's probably the best part of the message. The rest is like, oh, what? But, but the question is, how much do you want your team to win? That's the title, and hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll see it as we bring it together. Super Bowl 2021, I guess. So the two teams, are, if I got this right, the Buccaneers and the Chiefs? Are that, those yeah, are the Tampa two? Bay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? Tampa Bay Buccaneers, okay, I'm just, uh, all right. And, and uh, the, is it KC Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs? See, now you're realizing that I'm not that big of a football fan. I like football if the Steelers are playing. And I, I, I don't know anybody else. It's like, yeah, good luck for your team. That's about it, you know. See, even saying that, I'm in trouble after service, right? Everybody's going to let me have it with their teams. But <clears throat> you might not even be. Uh, a football fan. You might be a basketball fan, baseball fan. You might be a sports fan altogether, or you might not be a fan of sports at all, okay? So if that's the case, don't think you're going to walk out of here or leave this service um, thinking that some, it's not for you because you don't like sports. And, and, and so um, I was just thinking about these two teams, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Chiefs. So the Chiefs are defending champions, am I right? So they're defending champions. That's cool. And then I kind of look at the other team as an underdog team. Uh, I, I, I don't know a whole lot, but I did a little research, and I, and I noticed that teams started out a little tough. You know, they had some difficult times. But somehow they made it into the Super Bowl. And <clears throat> I find this interesting that Tom Brady is the quarterback of this team. 
Okay, so somebody asked me, who am I going for? Matter of fact, some friends from Texas, I got some friends over there, and some, some friends from Indiana, uh, asked me, who, you, who am I going for? And, you know, this is tough because I have a lot of friends in Kansas City, and I, and I, I love my friendships, and so I want to back up my friends, whoever they're, they're going for, but I just need everybody to understand where I'm coming from, okay? For a number of years now, the Patriots have been a wrench in, in the Pittsburgh Steelers' spokes. I mean, maybe not this year or anything, but like there's been so many times that the New England Patriots just goofed up the Steelers. And so I want, this is what I want to happen. I want Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win the Super Bowl. Not because I like Tom Brady, not because I like the Buccaneers, but because I want... For once, the, the New England Patriots to get a nice, good wrench in their spokes, a good slap in their face, and all the New England Patriots fans, I'm sorry, I love you guys. I do. I got some friends from Lev Church that are Patriots fans, and I never forget you guys, Lev Church, and, and uh, other fr friends. But I just, you know, I just need the New England Patriots to just be like, ugh, because Tom Brady took a pretty much an underdog team, and they're in the Super Bowl Great, in great part because of that quarterback. That's just my opinion. So I want that to happen, not because I'm a big fan of them, but I just need them to go, oh, man, one time. You guys okay with this? Like, can you handle that? Okay, I'm not a hater. I'm not hating on anyone. Okay? All right. I just had to get that off my chest. That's just the one thing I just... Ugh. You know, there was a time when I'd get up here and talk about football, and I'd be talking about a home run. Or a three-point shot. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know nothing about nothing. I just, I, I grew up with sports a little bit, but I just didn't get, I, I guess basketball and, and, <clears throat> and contact sports like boxing and mixed martial arts were, were always my favorite growing up. And anyways, let's get to the, <laughs> sorry, I just had to get that off my chest, if you know what I mean. All right, so uh, this, this message and the title how much you, do you really want your team to How much do you want your team to win? I want to look at this message <clears throat> from the perspective of the church. Okay, I'm going to just cut to the chase and get right to where we're going. Because uh, I, I think football is a great team sport. I think it's one of the best sports to, to show what, what winning as a team looks like. Okay, because even with the Buccaneers and you got Tom Brady, there, he didn't make it to the Super Bowl alone. And I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not giving him that kind of pat on the back. You know, it took a, a scrappy team uh, with a few pieces to, to come together. But there was much more to that. And, and that comes from behind the scenes. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But I just want to point out to you that football is a good sport to, to show uh, an example that we would need to look at as, as it pertains to the church. So when, when we think about team sports and we think about winning, uh, you know, maybe say basketball, one guy can take over a game and win a game. We know that. But that one guy's not going to, they're not going to win a championship with one guy. Some of you say, well, what about Michael Jordan? I don't even want to hear that right now. It's Super Bowl, right? Uh, you know, a, a baseball, somebody can just get hot with the bat and, you know, win a game. But football is just one of those games where you need everybody. You, you, you need everybody. And, and you really need, you even need the guys who run out with the Gatorade bottles. You need those guys. I'm not making them sound less. You need those guys because you can collapse right in the middle of the field. You're not careful, right? You don't get hydrated. And so you need everybody. And, you know, and uh, does anybody remember the movie, Remember the Titans? Remember that movie? I like that movie. It was a good movie, Denzel Washington. There's this one part where, where um, you know, there's this is a bunch of racial problems and the, these two guys on the team, there's one guy on the team, you know, he just wanted to sabotage the, the game so he would, he would not do his part. He was, he was a guy who would, uh, I think he might have been a defensive end, would be blocking for the, the quarterback and he just let guys come in and sack the quarterback on his own team because he, he just was trying to sabotage the game. And See, that's a good example. You know, if, if, everyone sh doesn't show up. If everybody's not there to, to play that team sport, then what's going to happen? It's going to break down somewhere. 
And, and so uh, I want to clarify a couple things and dive in. First, I want to clarify that Jesus said this. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Is that true? Of course it's true. Jesus said it and that's it. Matter of fact, that old bumper sticker, Jesus said it. I believe it. That settles it. That's not even right. Jesus says, said it. That settles it whether I believe it or not. That's more right, right? And so let's make something very, very clear. We are not talking about today the worldwide church of God. Well, I don't have to go to church. I am the church, and I'm not, I don't have to do that. That's not something that I have to do because I am the part of the church. And that, that is, you are right that you are part of the worldwide church of God. But God's word is very clear that God has set up local churches. And even though the gates of hell cannot, will not prevail against the worldwide church of God, I'm not talking about a denomination either. I'm talking about the body of Christ. The enemy is defeated. He, he was defeated the, the, the day of the cross and the resurrection. How many know what I'm talking about? So he's already defeated. Church of God's already won. But when you bring it down to the local level, how many know many local churches lose sometimes? Many. We lose sometimes. And that's a different issue. That's not because uh, Jesus' words weren't true. Because uh, ultimately, the body of Christ, we are on the winning team. We are victorious. But there are local churches that God has set up uh, around the world, across the world, in every town, every, everywhere. There's churches, right? And God has set those churches up so that we can be the local church of God in that area and so that we can win in that area. The Lord wants us winning. He does. And so I want to so make those comparisons a little bit today. You know, uh, I think football really is a, a good example, a good team sport. So um, I want to just mention, I, me and Mo were talking right before service, and I, I was just talking because, you know, I was like, he, he's not a big sports fan. And I was like, you know, uh, sp- you, you could be here and say, I don't care about sports at all, at all. Well, th- what we're talking about is not a game. Even though it's Super Bowl Sunday and even though we have a, a, a fun time with it and we're going to enjoy it, I'm going to enjoy the game after, you know, afterwards. I'm going to kick back and watch the game and eat junk food. I'm definitely going to do that. Oh, yeah. Man, it's going to be good. I, I won't be feeling good Monday. I know that too, but it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a good time. And, and, and football's fun. But the thing about it is what we're actually talking about is not a game. It's not a game. And so you don't have the choice to step back and say, I'm not a fan. As a matter of fact, let me encourage you to never be a fan. Don't ever be a fan. Be a player. Don't be a spectator up in the bleachers going, boo, to the Steelers. Because you will get rebuked. I'm kidding. I felt that through the camera. You will get rebuked. Don't just be somebody watching the game. Don't be somebody who says, I don't even go to the game because I don't like sports because this is not a game. The local church of God was set up by the king of kings to win. To win what? Not to win a game, but to win souls. To, to, to shine the light of the, of the message and the love of God so that people will be brought out of darkness into marvelous light. The greatest victory of all time is that Jesus defeated the enemy and gave salvation to everyone and anyone who wants it. And then he told us, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah, but he only sent you know, a few, yeah, but those few started reaching people, and then he said, go two by two, and then he sent out the 120, and then, you know, uh, they got filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they begin to get persecuted, and they begin to spread out, and, and the gospel kept going, right? How many know that if we realize this is not a game, and we engage in this, uh, in this beautiful, beautiful thing called the church, the local church, then what we're going to see is victory after victory, after victory. Now, that's a crazy thing to say right now because there's a lot of people saying, well, if that's the case, what about this, the sicknesses and COVID and all that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but COVID cannot reach my soul. 
It's already reached my body. <laughs> See, that's why I'm really... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, it, it has, and it's reached a lot of people's bodies. But it cannot reach my soul. And Jesus, the Lord said it. Do not fear the one who can kill the body but not the soul. Rather, fear the one who can kill both body and soul in hell. God is the only authority. He's the only power. He's the only one we should be afraid of. And he doesn't even want us to be afraid of him that way. Does anybody remember the kukui? Remember that? Right? Gosh, my, my grandma used to scare me with that. Freaked me out till one day I grew up and realized, I was, wait, what? Kukui. <laughs> anyway, God's not telling us to fear him like that but respect and honor him. But I do want to point out an interesting verse that's not even on our list, won't be on our screen uh, today. I think it's Hebrews 10, 33, or somewhere right around there. Just read it. You'll see it. The Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay, so you can't play with him either. Because even though he doesn't want you walking around like fearing him like the boogeyman or something, you, you can't play with him because he's almighty. All right, and so uh, we're going to look at a couple things. I, I believe that God wants us winning victory after victory, and so we'll learn a little bit from football, but let's take it and connect it to uh, the, the scripture. So I, I'd like to start out by, uh, I'll quote this scripture while you're turning your Bibles to uh, go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. That's what we're going to be looking at first, and while you're doing that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to quote for you Ephesians 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2, verse 10. The Bible says, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Amen? Did you catch that? And so, you're still turning there as I am. And here we go. So, Ephesians chapter 4. Did I say four? I did. You see Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. When you're there, please say amen. Amen. I'm going to read this for you. Reading out of the New King James, this is what the Bible says. And he, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for uh, the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God in a perfect, or to be, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into, uh, uh, into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joint and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. We're going to stop here first and then you can go ahead and get yourself ready for 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I won't tell you the verses because then you'll read ahead and you won't be listening to me. And you, you need to listen to the mouth, to, to the spokesman. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm just the mouthpiece, the living word of God, and the Spirit of God will speak to you. So when I think about football, I think about every player's needed. We need everyone. I, I, know, some, uh, I know some people, I have friends who've been a part of championship teams at, at lower levels and never really got to play that much on the field but were uh, an integral part to the victory of their team. And the reason was because during practices, everybody was involved, working hard, practicing, uh, getting things down right, getting things in order so that the games would be victorious. And so everybody mattered. The equipment coach 
mattered, right? That funny joke somebody told me today about I'm missing my shoulder pads. The equipment coach matters, <laughs> right? And so uh, when, you, when you think about that, you think about how each position, uh, not every position is desired. Not everybody wants to be the third string um, center or, you know, uh, O-line or, or D-line. Not everybody wants uh, to be a, a third string on the safety team. You know, not everybody desires these, these positions that nobody really hears about that much unless they do some crazy thing like, you know, the, the putt receiver runs a 100-yard putt return or something, right? Or wh whatever the case, the, there's, there's, in the team there's so many positions and they're not all desired. It's sad because they're all important and you need them all. And, and just like that, in the body of Christ, the, the, the church itself, the local church functions powerfully and beautifully and victoriously when the body comes together and recognizes that uh, the needs that it has and recognizes what needs to happen. And so I was just thinking about that. What are some of the things that the local church needs to be victorious? And how, you know, how it connects. We're going to look at the verse we just read in, in, in just a minute. But I'd like to point out a couple of things we're going to look at. What is needed? Uh, uh, Lori, in, in prayer time, she mentioned how we need coaches. That Jesus is the life coach, right? And so he, Jesus is everything, right? Everything to us. He's, he's the... Uh, He's the waymaker and the playmaker, right? He's the Gatorade in the bottle that we drink. He's everything, folks. He's that soft grass we land on when we, got, when we get stuck hard. He, he's our everything. He's everything to us. He's the guys who run off with the stretcher, you know, when somebody gets injured in a game. He's our everything and we rely on him. But in the, in the team itself, what do we need? We need coaches. We need players. We need referees. And we need rules. Right? We need coaches, players, referees, and rules. Let me make some things clear for the time that we have. Number one, I'm not going to explain rules today. Okay? Because people come to church sometimes, and one of the biggest turnoffs that people come to uh, experience when they come to church is, is a, a big list of rules that some, you know, uh, church police walk around and, you know, there's rules. Well, I get that. I get that the Bible teaches us how we ought to live. Okay? But I'm not going to get into a, a list of rules because the reality is that would take us all day. How many of you have broken rules in your life? Okay, how many of you have broken a little bit more than one rule in your life? How many of you kind of went a little further than that? Yeah. How many of you are still doing it? No, just kidding. <laughs> we ain't going to do no jumping jacks right now, but you get the point. We're, we're still breaking rules because we're learning and we're growing and, and, and we're, we're not trying to. So let's, we're going to just recognize, uh, just like a football team, they play by the rules. And when they don't, when they don't, even if they win, is it really a win? Right? When a certain football team had a certain camera crew uh, doing certain filming on certain other teams' um, practices to have certain victories in certain games. Notice I, it's called cheating. Notice I didn't mention any team names. Because I'm already in hot water with some friends. You know what I mean? I don't even know. If they win by cheating, not, if they win without following the rules, is it really a win? That's like a guy who, who um, you know, plays the lotto, wins the lottery, um, no, not even that. I want to go for tonight. Goes to Pachanga or one of these um, casinos and, and takes their tithe money and, you know, drops it on there and, and somehow wins this bunch of money and comes in talking about, oh, the Lord bless me. I've just been so blessed by the Lord. Did you now? Oh, my question is, which Lord? That's, <laughs> right? You may, you may look like you got a victory, but that might be a cheating victory. You know what I mean? That's not a real victory, and that's not going to last. 
So let's not talk about rules. We need coaches, players, and refs. Yeah, we need referees. Who are referees? Referees are those ones that we were talking about earlier, those people, those mature believers who come alongside and help people know, okay, you went out of bounds. You went out of bounds. Yeah, you need to just learn how not to. And I'm not talking about a, 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 that, a, the kind that comes up and, and, and just beats you up with it. All right? And we'll get into that a little bit more in a bit. We need good refs, people who, who here's what we ri- rely on refs for. Refs get into the rules, and they know the rules well. Does anybody know what the rule book is for the believers in the local church? Man, nobody said anything. It's called the Bible, folks. <laughs> The B-I-B-L-E, right? The Word of God. Now, if some of you did say that, I'm sorry I didn't hear you uh, because the people through the camera were louder than you this morning. Sorry. It's the Word of God. We know what that, what what God has told, how how God has told us to live. You know, that's what I always find fascinating people. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Well, can you read? I don't know how to read. Well, guess what? You don't have an excuse either because they got audio Bible. Matter of fact, audio Bible is really good because it teaches you how to pronounce all those crazy names. Nebu, Nebu who? Nebu, Nebuchadnezzar? Huh? What? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, that's how you say it. Oh, good. Right? So we know that God's given us beautiful rules. And the refs, they step in, they learn it, and then they teach it and share and help guide. Amazing. So what we need is coaches and players, just like in, that, in the game of football. We need coaches and players. And so what I want to do is, in, in looking at the passage that we, we just looked at, uh, I want to look at it a little bit for the remaining of our time. This is what I see happens. With coaches, when a church has good coaches, two things with good coaches. Number one, they are able to teach. They're able to coach, right? This is not, co- what was the silent treatment? Okay, <laughs> coaches, good coaches are able to coach. What do I mean by that? Uh, they're the kind that, that are able to, to help you and guide you and correct you and, and, and show you along the way. This is not, okay, you get three chances and after that, don't even talk to me because you're breaking the law. No. I like to refer to coaches like shepherds, pastors, people with nurturing hearts. See, there's a difference between a teacher and a pastor or a shepherd, someone who has the heart to nurture a person along the way. Okay, and, and that, that's really like a, a parent. You know how parents have to put up with their kids? Yep. I mean, I hate to be that way. Uh, I got kind of a lot of those kids. I meant kids. I got a lot of those. And yeah, there are seasons where you just have to put up with the, the season they're in. When they're one and a half years old, okay, and they've got like a, a tummy ache in the middle of the night and they're crawling all over you and they're crying, right? Oh, no, no, you're out, you're benched. You're not going to put them out. You're not going to take them and put them in the living room. You're benched. <laughs> what you do is you, you, they're one and a half. You nurture them to the next stage. How about when they're four and five? Even 15, right? There, there's, there's nurturing times. There, coaching does this. Okay, um, and I can't really use football that well, so I'm going to go with the basketball analogy. You know, uh, for the longest time when I was a kid, I couldn't shoot the basketball right because I didn't have enough strength in my arms, so I would shoot it from here. Like many of you. Like many of you still do. Oh, that's cold. So seriously, I would, I would shoot it from here until I got enough strength to have a proper form to shoot it the right way. But you know what? <clears throat> when I was a little kid, I didn't have a coach saying, you know what, you're not going to play anything until the day you can actually do that. So you just sit over there and watch. You just sit over there and take a look at what's going on in the game. You be a spectator while, you know, while the superstar kids are, are playing. No, what happened was, that's okay. 
you know, here's what you do. Right now, you're not strong enough. It's okay. You just learn how to shoot, but then practice this. And, and then, you know, a few weeks later in the next season, all right, okay, good. Now you're shooting crooked. So let's get your elbow and let's bring it in straight and let's do that. Okay, very good. And, you know, a little later on, okay, now you got to jump a little when you go. You know, it's a nurturing thing. It's a, it's a caring and a building thing. And see, uh, you know, a coach needs to be able to not just teach the play or the plan. Not just teach it, okay, here's what we're doing, A, B, C, and D, now run, get going. And if you don't, then, you know, there's a problem. I, I'll tell you right now, a church will never have victory that way. We'll never grow. Why? Because we'll never a, ever able, be able to see people rise up and become all that God's called them to be and to contribute to that team and to be a blessing and for the, the whole team to be whole and in unity and in strength and victory to go and do what we were meant to do. What's the win? It's the lost, isn't it? It's worshiping in unity, praising in unity, praying in unity, uh, proclaiming the gospel in unity, living it out in unity, loving one another. Two greatest commandments, love God, love your neighbor. Amen. Coaches need to be able to teach, but not just teach, to coach. And that takes patience. And that takes, uh, you know, uh, the ability to have uh, mercy and, and, and grace over people, right? Right? Amen. Four amens is good. I'll take the four amen. That's good. But two things I said about coaches, and the second thing is this. Coaches have to be teachable. How many know everybody's got a leader? Everyone's got somebody speaking into, the, into their life, and the minute you don't, the minute you can't take what somebody else has to say to help you, then you've become your own leader. You've become the limit. So now you're the one that knows everything and you're the one that has, is going to make all the decisions of, as to, to what needs to be done. And so every, every coach doesn't just need to know how to coach and teach and develop players. They also need and, and teach the, the plan, uh, the overall plan of the game. They also need to be teachable. Uh, I remember a story. I heard this story today, actually. Uh, this morning, I was re refreshing up. Does anybody remember that one movie called Inv Invincible? True story. The, I think it was the Philadelphia Eagles. Do you remember that some time ago? Okay, I got two people. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's a good movie. It is a good movie, actually. It's pretty good. And no, I'm not promoting the cussing and the beer drinking in it. Just in case people are like, I didn't know this movie, that's a wicked movie. Well, I mean, the, don't even get me started with that, because I'll, I'll be like, let me see your movie stash. Let me get a look at your viewing history. Judge me like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> just playing. That's cold. Okay, so, but that movie, the, I think the true story was not only about a, a local guy who got a chance to be on a pro team, I think his name was Vince Papali, but it was also a story of this brand new coach. I think he was coming from college, and they gave him this, uh, this NFL team because the team was terrible for so many years, and this guy, over some years, took it to a pretty decent team and, and had some victory. But later on, you find out that coach, I think his name was Dick Vermeil. This coach ended up coaching another team all the way to winning a Super Bowl. And um, slips my mind which team that was right now. I kind of forgot. But, uh, but uh, so, there was an interview after the game, and they asked him, what, what was it? What was it that changed where you went from winning games and being a pretty good team to, to winning all the way? And the coach said, I had to change my mentality. I had to change my mentality. He said, I had to go from, from uh, finding the best players to finding the best coaches. He said, that's where it changed. He said, I, I used to be looking around for the best players, to, to recruit the best players, to have the best chances to win. He said, but what I noticed is it always fell short because of the coaching level. See, I started putting around me coaches that were better than me, that were uh, coaching longer than me that could teach me things so that together we coached and made that team healthy and that's how we went from winning games to winning championships are you listening 
Coaches don't need to just be able to teach. They need to be teachable. And one of the biggest and ugliest things that could happen in a local church is when you're not teachable, when there's no humility. I'm talking about, uh, and, and uh, anyone can be, have false humility. How many know that? Anyone can pretend to be humble. Right? Thank you. There's a few more amens on that. So you at home, it was good in here. It was just... Uh, you know, it, it, the, it, let's, I, I, for time's sake, I got to move on. So here's what, here's what we're saying here. Coaches have to be able to, to teach and they have to be teachable. So it, it, we need that. And, and so some of you are like uh, looking at me like, yeah, pastor, you're preaching to yourself right now. I am. I'm, 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 I'm open to that. I want to learn. I want to grow. But I have a question. Before you guys feel like, yeah, see, that wasn't for me. That was for you, pastor. You're the, you're the coach. I have a question. I have a real question. And just for that, the question goes to Mo and the rest. See, Remember that commercial? They ain't no I in team. Remember that, anybody remember that commercial? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, this coach who went from winning games to win, winning championships found the shepherds, found the coaches. So I wonder, PCF, Montebello, are there any coaches in the house? Are there any shepherds in the house? Are there any people that are teachable and can teach, but not just teach, nurture and be patient and kind and not judgmental, but be a nurturing person who can help people grow so that other people can grow up in the space and time and, uh, you know, at the pace that God intended. See, because without those coaches, it ain't going to happen. And so, if there was like invisible tomatoes that were being tossed at me, I caught them and threw them right back. And if you went like this, oh, oh. yep, those were those tomatoes coming right back at you. Does anybody remember the title? How much do you want your team to win? Enough to look deep in your heart and say, God, what part do I play? Am I a shepherd? And, and don't get me wrong, not everybody's called to be pastors and shepherds. We all play very important parts. Remember, the, what, what we need for victory is coaches and players. And the value of them are equal. Jesus shed the same amount of blood for me as he did for you. So the value is equal. We just play different roles. And with that, I got to get to at least looking at that scripture again. And don't worry, we're almost done. I can tell. I can already tell. <laughs> There's this vibe you get in, in church. It's a... What I would like to do is I want to take it from verse 15. The Bible says, but, and we're in Ephesians uh, 4, speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, the whole team, every member, every person, the whole body joined and knit together. Joined and knit together. Guess what, folks? You're knit to me and I'm knit to you. You may not like that, but guess what? If you are humble and teachable, you don't got a choice, do you? Because God chooses that. Well, if I don't like that, I'll just, you know, just try something else. Man, this ain't Burger King. You don't have it your way. That's pride. That's pride is what that is. It's my way or I don't like this. I don't feel. Yeah? Yeah? Well, it's not your way or even the coach's way. It's the rule book's way. Amen. I don't like how my team never wins. My team never wins. Hmm. Are you in the stands watching? Or are you at least carrying water for someone? 
Are you visiting the locker room when somebody's got an injury? You know what I mean? Uh, whoa. You can complain about your team losing all you want, but I tell you right now, if you're up in the stands, you are a spectator. You are a fan. And we never want to be fans of Jesus and fans of his work. We want to be players, right? We're knit together. What does a football team need to win? They need to be one unit. They need to be together, don't they? Well, you don't really like the way the coach is calling that play, so I'm going to go off and do my own thing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little Super Bowl dance in the, in the end zone uh, when I catch that awesome pass. No, because what will happen is the football will never be thrown to you because you just can't do what you're called to do. Can, you get that? We're in it together. We're unity. We have to be. We absolutely have to be. Knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective... Oh, wait, I can't pass that up. Every joint supplies. I promise you, and I don't know much about football. I wish I, I, wish I knew more. But you know those guys that block for the quarterback? You know, if I was the quarterback, I'd be taking those guys out to dinner. <laughs> you know? I'd be blessing those guys, praying over them, you know, helping the coaches, yeah, Tell them that when they come in tight, just, you know, I'd be helping them grow. Because if they don't grow, I keep getting hit. Amen. And man, my jaw can't take it no more. My back, my, my twig legs, they don't hold up for this. I need that guy who's blocking for me to do his part. Right? right? Amen. He supplies something to me and I supply something to him or her. See, all the sisters thought they were getting away with it. See, no, not just the him. Well, all I see is guys out there. Uh, we're not talking football anymore, are we? I supply for you, you supply for me. We supply together. And if we are not supplying each other's needs and taking care of each other, helping each other, nurturing each other, and caring about each other through their, our times of growth, all we're going to have is losing seasons over and over and over. And you can blame the coach all you want. You can blame your teammate. Yeah, hot dog over here just wants to be a superstar. Just won't get with it. But you can blame hot dog. <laughs> but I'd like to pull out the rule book, which is like also a mirror. And see, are you supplying what you're supposed to be supplying? And it's not for a trophy, folks. It's for an eternal, eternal cause. Every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. When every part does its share in the team, we are effective. When we don't, we are not. It causes growth of the body for the edifying, the building up of itself in love. What do we need? We need coaches that can teach and that are teachable. We need players that are united and supply to one another. We need to have, it, there needs to be a humility about that, a care. You know, when you have no mercy for, for someone well, Pastor, how much mercy do we have to give? You know, they keep making the same mistake. Well, what if that was you? How much mercy would you want for you? You, you see what I'm saying? Imagine, so I got five kids. I'll throw it out there. All five of my kids are not the same. They, they all make different kinds of mistakes. And so, you know, what if I said, okay, rule book, rule book, you only get seven mistakes. Use them well. Because after those seven, that's it. You're done. You know, here's the reality. Some, some kids are going to make more mistakes than other kids. But we're family. We're in the body of Christ. We're the team. 
And that, that kid that just can't figure out that one play and keeps goofing it up, you keep helping them. Thank you, my brother. Amen to that senior. Keep helping them. Well, how many times should I do? Seven times seven? Oh, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Jesus will step in and say, <clears throat> do you know how to do math? Do you need a calculator? How about 70 times seven? How about 70 times 707? Whatever it takes. It grows up. The body grows with good coaches and players. And so I'm going to bring this down by reading our last ver our, our passage. And let's go, go there with me. 1 Corinthians 9, right? Is that where I, 1 Corinthians 9. I'm going to just, we're going to close with this because you guys are ready for, after all this, man, you're ready for uh, f some football. I'm ready for some junk food. <clears throat> oh, yeah. We're going to bring this down, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, and this is what the Bible says. Do you not know that those who run in a race, they all run, but one receives the prize? They're all running, and they're all running hard, but one of them runs just a little bit more and wins, right? That's what he's saying. Do you not know that that's how a race in, it is? Run in such a way that you may win the prize or obtain it. Well, what do you mean? Don't wait for my brothers, be a hot dog? No. <laughs> if everyone receives God's word, this is not talking about skills, gifts, and talent. This is talking about effort. This is talking about a heartfelt commitment. If everyone runs like they're the winner, they all will be. They all will be, right? Verse 25, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Simply put, again, we don't have the time to break it all down. What temperance is, is when a person is, is fully aware of their life and realizes that some things are not good for them and some things are, and they make the decisions to temper it. You know, it's beautiful when I meet somebody who, who knows their weaknesses. I love it. You know, I have a couple of friends who have anger issues. I love talking. Man, I'm not judging them. I'm like, praise God, they know. Praise God that they know. Think about when they don't know. Oh, what? Uh, hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. What about you? You're the problem. I'm not the problem. You're the problem. Right? Oh, Lord, when they don't know, we're in trouble. Thank God. But I love that. I'm using that as a good example because when a person knows that, they temper that. They go, you know what? I, I, I'm working on this, so I'm, I'm going to stay away from those things that cause me to be angry because I care about other people, and I don't want to hurt anybody else, and so I'm going to make sure to stay away from those things that trigger me while I'm working on this bad problem in my life. Right? Verse 25 again, everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But for we, we do it for an imperishable crown. It's an eternal, eternal thing. Beautiful, right? It goes on to say, verse 26, Therefore, Paul says, I run, but not with uncertainty. Like, I don't run just like not sure how much effort. Will, how much. I run to win. I give it my all. And not at the cost of stepping on people. They're not part of the track. Did you catch it? They're not part of the track. I'm going to step over you so I can get what I need, what I want to do. You're in my way. I'm going to bad talk you so that people stop looking at you so they start looking at me so I can do what I want to do. That's demonic is what that is. Paul says, I run, but I run not with uncertainty. I fight, but not like somebody who's beating the air. And then he goes on to say, verse 27, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should 
become disqualified. I've got to bring this down because we're done t- this morning. And, and so uh, the, what we talked about today is, is we need coaches, we need players. We already have a rule book and we have good referees and mature believers who help us know. But understand, the, la- the, the, the one thing I didn't touch on today is the one thing that many churches struggle with and that is the game plan. The game plan. We're not just talking about the Bible now. Those are general things. We're in Montebello, folks. We're in East LA. We're in Hacienda Heights. We're in local churches with local needs and local um, struggles. So we have to have a local plan that touches the world as well, of course. And that's the harder part right there. It's hard to get a plan going without a team. I hear, hear it all the time. People talk, they're upset because they don't like the vision of the pastor. They don't like the vision or the lack thereof. There's no vision. There's no vision. Oh, there's vision. You just need a team. We need a team. And I'll tell you right now, I am thankful for years, decades of Montebello. I am thankful and I am so grateful. But there's a time, it's time to reset. We've been hearing those words a lot, haven't we? Reset, reset. There's a reset. Well, guess what? There's a reset in Montebello. There's a reset. Time to wipe it clean and go back to building the work with a loving and beautiful heart. I gotta stop because I'm gonna keep talking, talking, talking. Let's, let's give the Lord a hand clap if we can. Come on, let's thank our King. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for just a simple message. But Lord, we know your word is pretty clear, Lord. We know it's for us, God. Thank you, my Jesus. Now, I did take up a lot of time, so what we're gonna do, we have two things to do left, and they're quick, really, really quick. We have two things to do. One, we're gonna pray. And I just know that some, some of us, maybe all of us, I, for, for one, definitely need this prayer. I just wanna pray that God would help me. I wanna pray that God help me to be the best that I can be for him and for you guys best I can be. And that means temper myself. If there's areas in my life that need to be cleaned up and gotten, I got to get rid of that, then I got to get rid of it. It's not about me. It's about, it's about everyone else. Right? And so maybe some of you are like, I, I kind of want to pray something like that for myself. And these prayers are between you and God. And, and what we're going to do is, is because of time, last week we opened up the altars and we found a way to do it beautifully and it works. Today we're not going to do that because of the time situation. But I think God can allow this whole place to be an altar right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray and ask God for his grace and mercy. And then we got one more thing. Let's bow our heads and, and just join in. You don't have to listen to my prayer. What I want to ask you to do is you talk to God right there where you're at and tell him what's in your heart. Tell him what's going on. Father, in Jesus' precious name, I am so grateful for the opportunity that we have to reset and Lord, to get things in order, healthy and, and united and loving. And, and, and Father, we just, I just thank you so much because you are, you are our God and our everything. And you've given us a, 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 a team and, and, and you've given us everything we need to grow. And so, Lord, I just want to pray over this church congregation and our baby churches as well. That, Father, you would help us to be teachable and humble. And, Lord, help us to grow and to nurture into each, each stage of our life and our walk with you, God. Help us, Lord, and help us to do that for others. Father, help us to look out for other people, to recognize, Lord God, that, that the only way we grew is because somebody helped us. And if we, Lord God, help us to realize that if, if, we, if we had nobody and we think we've grown, then, Lord, we... Lord, help us to realize that there's some deficits in us. There's some undeveloped areas that need to be dealt with. Father, help us to be united. And Lord, supplying to each other, Father, all that's needed. And Lord God, we pray this. We don't know to what extent 
you would use this team, but we do know this, Lord, you want to use this team. So we ask that you would help us to be all that we can be, Father, in one unit, faithful, united, Lord, that we can reach the lost and touch souls, Lord, one person at a time, one family at a time, maybe a neighborhood at a time, even a city. Oh, gracious God, we just ask that you would make that possible, Lord. So we repent of our sin and shame, and we ask that you would help us to see ourselves clearly so that we would be, or, and we would do the right things, but we would be, uh, have the kind of attitude, Lord God, that's not looking at everyone else, but looking at how can I run the race? How can I fight the fight? How can I temper myself? How can I contribute to something amazing that God has set up? Lord, let that be our cry for your glory and honor, for the souls of men and women, for the souls of the children, for the souls of people in the last days. Use us for your glory, we pray. And everyone who agrees with that prayer for yourself, say it with me. Amen and amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, definitely stay with me. <laughs> oh, that's a good, you picked a great song. To, uh, we, for time's sake, we have one more thing to do, and, and I just know that you guys are going to, you know, I know God spoke to our heart. I know what's going to happen. Those who really took that to heart, we're going to do what we need to do. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a blessing. Um, tonight, uh, this morning rather, we're going to be doing our, having our offering time. And you know I normally say stuff. Go ahead and ushers, come on up. You, you know I normally say stuff, just simple things to remind us that offering is an act of worship. And I, I, I can't talk about that right now, even though maybe if there's a new person or someone online that's watching that doesn't know, you, you can text to give, and I would just encourage you, read up on what the Bible says about giving. It's not something that you want to feel guilty, guilted into doing. You give from your heart. You give as unto God. You give into a local ministry. That really is your, you know, part of the things you do in, in, to be united in the local church. This morning, I'm going to do something a little different. Okay, I want to show you a picture on our TV. TVs. So, now as we're showing those pictures on the TV, we're also showing these same pictures online. So everyone online is looking at these pictures. Can you see the mushrooms? You're welcome to turn around. Well, Dave, you can look at it. Does anyone know what, this, the, what the picture is of? It's our sign outside. Okay. The reality is the picture makes it look better than it is. <laughs> but I'm going to just be plain and simple about this. It is, it is unacceptable. Okay, so COVID made us close our doors in 2020. But I don't think COVID affected the sign. I'm telling you, me and, me and Mike and Josiah were driving yesterday, and there was a sign of this Mexican restaurant, and I know it's open, and I've eaten there. Good food, man, good food. But their sign is like ours. If you look at it, one side of it. Is there another side, Jace? Can you flip? Oh, you didn't get that? Okay, because the other side has a piece of wood, painted brown. We're driving by this Mexican restaurant. We've seen this sign. On, in my mind, I'm like, I've been there to eat, so I know it's good. I'd recommend it. But imagine somebody passing by. Really, it looked like the, the restaurant shut down. It's closed down. Abandoned building. And every time I pull up to our church, I see that, and I go, man, this thing looks like our church shut down. Like, it just looks horrible out there. And we know it's not true. But the real, reality is it's just an unacceptable thing. So somebody kicked it off and gave $200 to get it started, to get the sign going, to get to, for PCF Montebello to get a new sign. Some, somebody kicked it off. So I'm, boom, I'm going to invest. I'm not telling anybody how much to give or what. It's all up to you and the Lord. And again, if it's a dollar, that's what you can do. That's fine. What I'm saying to you is, don't, don't do this. Well, since I don't have much, I'm not going to do anything. Everybody counts. Everyone. 
What if I only have change? I have a change jar at the house. Bring it. Notice I want no shame in that. Bring it. I was saving it up for my kids. Well, then give it to your kids. All I'm saying to you is this is an unacceptable thing. Now on your way out, watch all of you. You're going to be looking at the side. Watching the... Man, I never really, really, but yeah, this is bad. This is really bad. So we're going to do our regular offering. I just wanted to show you what the outsider who's driving by, the people in our neighborhood who are passing by, people who heard about our church and wasn't sure if it's open or not, passing by and looking, that's what they're seeing. Unacceptable. Does anybody agree with me that it's unacceptable? Yeah. Okay, that's, that, made, that didn't make me feel good. I see five hands went up. Now, was it like, you're just too tired, I'm just too tired, you have me here too long, I just can't even lift my hand right now? Or is it, oh, because if I lift my hand, then he's thinking I'm going to give him a bunch of money? No! This is God's house. How many know it just needs to be fixed? That just needs to be fixed. The best we can, right? Amen. If you feel guilty right now, don't. This is not a guilt trip. This is just a, we're a team. And it reminds me of like the, the Bad News Bears or like one of these little, little Giants Disney movies where they show up with their, their uniforms. You know, they're, they're, they're about to play hockey, but the guy's wearing a football helmet and the other one's wearing like some, you know, uh, back catcher's uniform and it's just terrible. That's what that's like. You know, we're a team. We don't, we don't want to show up in some messed up thing. We want to represent. Now, that's all I'm going to say. We good with this? Okay. I mean, I already made some people mad anyway, right? So I'm, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> this is God's house. Let's take care of it. Let's just take care of it. Well, you know, God will speak to us. We'll do what we can do. And that's it. That's it. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for allowing us to, to be a part of it. Lord, even those who are watching online today, Lord, I, I don't want them feeling a guilt trip either. It's not about that, Lord. I, I just pray that you, you'd bless your house and that those who are definitely a part of this team and feel like this is my local church, this is where I grow, this is where I get fed, this is where I want to serve and, and, and serve. Lord, God, let, let our hearts rise up with a, a, a heart for the house, a heart for your house, Lord. Lord, I just pray that those who feel that sense of guilt, Lord God, that they would just not even respond to guilt. That guilt is not a healthy thing. Father, bless your church. Bless it. Bless what's needing to come in so that your house is taken care of for this new season and this reset as we get ready for more families and more souls to come in. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, folks. Yes. Let's sing a song as we give to the Lord. What to say, Lord, it's you gave me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. You say, me, Lord, I'll give all that I am to you and every day I can peer right unto your world. What to say? <laughs> what to say, Lord, it's you gave me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. You saved me, Lord. I give all that I am to you and every day I can feel light unto the world. Every day it's you I live for. Every day I'll follow after you. Every day I'll walk with you, my Lord. Every day, every day, it's you I live for. Every day, I follow after you. Every day, I walk with you, my Lord. Yes, amen. Hey, everybody, hang on one second. While we close out, God bless you. Remember that uh, you who are at home, remember we love you, we're praying for you. And invite people. Hit, this, hit the like button and all of that. Let's keep the message going. God bless you.